What's up, guys? It is Ryan and Gus for Achievement Hunter, and we're doing a special Kickstarter version of, uh, what is the show? This is. This is. So I was like, this might be. This is. This, this will this be. This will be Novus Eterno. Novus Eterno. New eternity for you and all Latin speakers. Uh, well, the old eternity was getting kind of, you know, I did smelly. Not, I did not spend five minutes trying to look that up and arguing about <laughs> it on, on Google. <laughs> but uh, it is a MMORPG, yeah. MMO RTS. Sorry, there we go. MMO RTS. Letters straight. Get your get your TS out of your ass. Oh, I wish I could. So I saw this game at PAX Prime actually uh, in 2012. Oh wow, because it back that far. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's been in development for for quite a while, and I'm I'm really excited to finally be able to to play it and actually see you know hands on with the game. So I mean, I guess we bears explanation. So MMO RTS, it's essentially an RTS where Kind of like uh, Mighty Quest for Epic Loot, the other players are your only opponents. There's not really a PvE component to it. It's Correct. a PvP uh, uh, RTS game. But it's not it's not necessarily combat focused. Like True. You can, if you want to, you can be the kind of player who just mines and gathers minerals or resources for your 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 group. Yeah, there's a, a, a pretty advanced trade system and a research system, which the research sy- system was really kind of interesting because it doesn't rely on that kind of traditional tech tree system. Uh, it kind of ha- is based on inspiration. So you'll encounter situations and your engineers will just come up with an idea that you can then research and turn into technologies. But that means that everybody's technology system could be radically different. Right. It seems like a weird way to do it until you think about it. They don't want or you you don't want your first adopters to have an insurmountable lead over right. everyone else who ever plays. So doing it this way, uh, it, since it makes everyone's tech tree so different, uh, there there's there's really no real advantage to starting first. Yeah, you may develop a wildly more advanced technology by accident that is desirable for other players around you. Right. Uh, so it's got kind of a 2D uh, ground RTS element where you build structures on your planet, and uh, those allow you to build things, uh, ships that you can fly out into the universe with. So, uh, like on top of what I said, you know, you could, if you wanted to, you could uh, just mine resources. You mm-hmm. could also be just a manufacturer type player where yeah. you just have like really advanced factories and you just churn out ships for your friends and your allies. Yeah, the building part of that is really interesting because every ship requires certain parts and uh, I'm showing a little bit of ship building here where you're putting components individually into a ship and those components are manufactured before the ship is manufactured. So you could be someone that just makes components and trades them to other players uh, and they put those components in their ships. Could you be like Watto from Star Wars Episode One and just be like a junk trader, like and you immune just, to Jedi's? <laughs> you just collect all the ships that like get blown up and fall to the planet. That's what I want to play. Well, absolutely, you can do that. Why not? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we'll see that. We'll see the Watto class by the time uh, the game comes out. But uh, you can, you know, build your empire, go out and conquer other planets. This is a, a little video of me trying to conquer a planet that someone else owns. Only I forgot that it has a shield, so all of my ships are destroying themselves on it. <laughs> Uh, so, um, well, and, that, and that's one of the things I guess we should talk about. Since it's an MMO, if you log off, uh, you don't run the risk of losing everything necessarily. Right. Your core planets are protected by shield that is very difficult to overcome. Right. Uh, and in fact, you're, and you have a lot of opportunity to retake it. It has a very interesting kind of populace, uh, sort of Armada 2 style, uh, if you remember back that far, Star Trek and Armada where the populace on the planet will resist invaders, Mm -hmm. uh, and they'll kind of fight back. So once you log back in, you'll have a chance to kind of fight back and get your planet back if it's been taken. But it's really hard to take one of your core planets because of your shield. Mm -hmm. Your outlying planets are much easier to overtake. Right, but if they are taken, then you have the the resistance on the ground to hopefully help you uh, reclaim it fairly easily. And if your ships are destroyed after, I believe, 15 minutes after you've... Within 15 minutes of logging out, they get replaced for free. Yeah. Yeah. but the rest of the time, I guess that your planet just there on its own. It has an AI system that kind of takes care of your planet when you're not watching, uh, and that'll kind of defend it and kind of continue any projects you have in the works. Yeah, keep your production going. Yeah. So yeah, really, really, I'm really excited about this. Uh, hope they meet their Kickstarter goal so they can get the game out even faster. Yeah, that's right. It's on Kickstarter now, so uh, we'll probably put a link in the tr- description if you want to go check it out and see what their stretch goals are. They've got a lot of really interesting things uh, for their stretch goals. Let's stretch it out.